this is uh, raguraman all the way from uh, amrita university from the indian subcontinent for those of you somewhat familiar with the indian map i am at the southernmost tip of india the right next country here is sri lanka i think today i'm presenting the project which is uh, titled you know collaborative assessment for a uh, platform for practical skills and i think our target uh, market is uh, k16 here a quick uh, uh, a background about uh, amrita amrita is university was uh, founded by uh, world renowned uh, humanitarian mata amrita anandamayi the it's india's uh, truly first uh, multidisciplinary university with uh, five different geographically distributed campuses in the country a little over 15000 students 2200 strong faculty school of engineering school of business school of medicine and i think from day one this is what we had in mind in terms of a multidisciplinary university equally interesting is we also have about uh, 65 k12 schools and uh, so you know someone rightly remarked you know amrita is all about uh, kg to uh, pg as well the particular center that is responsible for uh, executing this project is called create create stands for center for research in advanced technologies for education it's uh, the idea here is you know you you work on cutting edge educational technologies yet uh, have a focus on uh, societal benefit you know this part of the developing nation where infrastructure is is still limited and uh, cost is a key factor so whatever we work on we we really need to uh, stay focused on the, the cost factor and how quickly it can also be deployed and and this is something that uh, we have a theme that is running across all our projects in terms of uh, a focus areas we we started off with a with an adaptive assessment program and then uh, also called as an intelligent tutoring system now we have moved on to a virtual learning environments uh, a language learning systems uh, we have a couple of schools that is uh, targeting uh, differently abled kids who are physically challenged hearing impaired and so all of our ict projects are about inclusiveness and as much as possible how do we include different types of uh, learners couple of key projects you know most of our projects are research fund granted government of india and and the likes of hp and uh, starting from educational data mining to language learning where i really mean the english language the online virtual laboratories and, and then collaborative learning initiatives it's interesting to note that you know i'm um, note that you know amrita learning which is our adaptive learning system a little over uh, 27000 students a week or using the system this is truly a a cloud based deployment that we have done and it 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 nicely integrates instruction with with assessment for learning provides a very rich media interactive personalized learning experience to students i think by far i would say in the country it's one of the largest deployments that we have and then and, and probably out there in the world we we do rank in the the top 10 in terms of an an deployed adaptive assessment learning program and this brings to these uh, the project in question here the the project caps you know thanks to the generosity of hp now we are part of the uh, measuring learning consortium that is led by carnegie mellon indeed we are very privileged and proud to be part of this consortium the the idea here is you know again uh, in in developing nations like india we we have a tremendous shortage of teachers tremendous shortage of uh, physical labs where students can go and perform those experiments and the only second best option is uh, you know interactive animations and simulations for for performing those experiments and based on the success of that e learning content and other adaptive learning we decided to focus a lot more on on the practical side there's a lot more initiatives on on teaching the concepts but when it comes to uh, for the students to have an hands on experience with practical experiments we found that was lacking so the project is really uniquely focusing on that and of course when you are talking about schools uh, it infrastructure is, is is always a challenge so you know as much as possible you take uh, that problem out of the schools and then go for a cloud based deployment so that you know they are able to access any time anywhere another unique thing that is uh, about this project is you know we really want to measure how well the students are learning it's one thing to say that this many students have accessed this experiments and then they had great fun doing 
versus did they actually learn, which actually aligns very well with the, with the goals of the measuring learning consortium, which talks about, you know, we need to measure the individual learning as well as the group learning. So as we go along in this presentation, I will briefly touch on those as well. You know, for those of you, you know, uh, somewhat familiar with India, you know, a little over 30 official languages, 1000 plus dialects and then English is still a second language. And if you look at internet, 80% of the content is in English. So there's a tremendous challenge in terms of when you do these kinds of projects, how do you have those people who are non-English, uh, they are also folded into this, uh, this advanced technology. So multilingual support is also a key component of our deliverables there. I think um, what we are talking by way of uh, measuring multiple skills is uh, more often the lab experiments are focused on, on end results or, or are beautifully producing the, the, the records of uh, you know uh, how well the experiment was performed. I think equally important is as they went through this experiments, you know what were their thinking, how did they assemble their experiments, how did they manipulate the experiment components and all. And the technology greatly supports you know a student looking at the screen we exactly know where all he went, what all he clicked. So one of the objectives that we have is not only just measure the reporting skills, but also the, the manipulative skills, also the, the procedural skills along this one. So you know, so-called the, the formative assessment and then give them continuous feedback during this process. And that is something very unique and different we want to achieve through this project. Our target group is you know, uh, students studying in ninth and 10th grade. Central Board of Secondary Education CBSE is the highest syllabus setting authority in the country. A little over 12,000 schools are under this board and those will be our primary target. Initially we are focusing on physics and chemistry biology as part of this project. And again, once again, you know, our target population is a low to middle income uh, group of people where the parents themselves are only so much exposed to technology. And, 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 and so the, the schools have only so much infrastructure. In fact, you know, when I talk to them about HP giving them tablets and, and, and that is where they will be performing this uh, experiment and absolutely you know they will be so delighted and they are looking forward to this project. I think we just, we just got started off with this project in the last couple of months. Uh, the current plans for this year is uh, more focusing on individual learning and, 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 and these are, these are pre-test and post-test measures that we are working on. There is intensive logging is happening and there is one more slide that details on you know what exactly is the amount of information that we are logging in then followed by you know questionnaires and, and surveys and actually sitting with them and, and, and taking their um, inputs and perceptions about this whole process. And of course we are also having a control group that is not going through any of these and they are still sitting in the traditional physical labs and then trying to compare and contrast with these two sets of students there. And here is a slide that talks about the, here is a slide that talks about the group learning. You know, one of the things that we are also working to see is, you know, here is a collaborative framework and could we also have a scheme where students, multiple students are together working on a practical as opposed to uh, a one person doing the experiment by itself. You know, here is a different components of this experiments or the labs. How do they collaboratively work on this one? Could that give us some interesting insights into how the kids are learning. So not only the individual learning but also the group learning. And uh, so you will find that later part of uh, this year that is what we will be focusing on and towards that we are developing a framework there. You know this is a slide that uh, slide that uh, talks about you know how we are measuring the procedural and manipulative skills. You know you give them a sequence of steps and at the very first at the minimum are they even able to identify you know what all things that belong to this experiments and what doesn't even belong to those experiments. You know that kind of a, a feedback gives us an idea about this is where the learning level of the child is. Now here is another example of you know the scaffold. So as, as a child is performing this experiment you know we are continuously giving him or her a feedback. And uh, the idea here is you know give them enough scaffolds and lead them up to the answer but don't give the entire answer right then and there. And of course, you know, based on those hints, he's still not able to perform. You take them automatically back to the tutorials and then run through the tutorials and, and, and bring them back to the experiments. And I think this is what is the, the, the biggest advantage of uh, an online labs. You know, you are able to go back to the system as many times as possible. In a physical labs, you are there, you know, once a week or once a month and, and, and that's about it. And even in those situations, the, the teachers end up performing the experiments and the students are really looking at it. You know, here in India, the class size is 1 is to 40, 1 is to 45. 
So the, the, the problem is, is quite a bit uh, compounded here. You know, here is for those of you, you know, you're still familiar with your school days and here is a screw gauge and then you can actually manipulate and read the minor scale and the major scale. You can measure the spherical diameter, you can take a cylinder and measure. And you know, I, I, I was simply fascinated when I started working with these virtual labs there and then I was actually able to get the feeling of, you know, how these equipments are. And then I, when, I, when, when these kids go back to the actual lab, there's a lot more familiarity already built into that. Here is the framework that we are working on. You know, at the end of the day, you know, the, the ICT savviness in teachers is also uh, very important. So we do not want them to be so much worried about authoring tools and how to create this experiment. So if I can provide them with a framework where they are able to quickly create these experiments, labs, and drag and drop, and I, I think that is a tremendous saving. That is a kind of a feedback we got from the teachers. And also when we are developing this lab, there's multiple institutions involved. We wanted to have some consistency in terms of the look and feel so that the, the, the end users, the learners have a consistent experience. So our, our collaborative framework is, is an attempt in that direction to set some kind of a standards in, in, in developing them and using them and then deploying them. These are some, uh, some uh, you know, few outcome measures that we are going to measure at, at the student level as well as at the, at the teacher level there. We talked about you know, extensive learner data that is getting logged. Uh, again, once again, the objective is it, is it is okay to get a one side of a data which talks about how many people logged and at what time of the day, how many experiments they touched. But once they have touched that experiment, what all they went through how much time they spent on each one of those steps. And I think that is the kind of the learner data that we want to track and see if that gives us some insights into are there some really learning gains happening or not. You know, how many times are they using the hint? How many times are they using the help? And then if you find that, you know, 30%, 40% of the students are actually used, that is also an interesting feedback to the teacher saying that maybe some of these concepts are not clear right then and there. Next day she can go back to the classroom and then start correcting those as well. Thank you very, very much, Samantha, and thanks for listening, folks.